spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit. And to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. All these gifts have a common origin, but it is the one and only Holy Spirit who distributes these gifts. He, he alone, alone decides which, guides, which, which gift, gift each, each person, person should, should have. have. Now, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But it is the same Holy Spirit who is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service in the church. But it is the same Lord we are serving. There are different ways that God works in our lives. But, but it, it is, is the same God who does the work through us. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. We are only servants. Each of us does the work the Lord gives us. My job may be to plant the seed in your hearts. And my job may be to water it. But, but it, is it is God, God not, not we, we, who, who makes, makes it grow. grow. Never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. If you serve Christ with this attitude, you will please God. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Use, Use your, your gifts to build each other up. So good. So good. Thank you for using your gifts to bless us. The wonderful blending in voices and ages and different skin tones to remind us of what Scripture has for us. So Christ, in his goodness and grace, has given gifts to his family, which is the church. These gifts of grace are given to each one. Each of you are gifted by God as he indeed chooses. Each one of us has both the responsibility and also privilege to use these gifts to build up the body of Christ and to accomplish his will in the world. We are to thank him for these gifts to us and then engage with the work. Now check this out, that he's doing by utilizing what he has given to benefit others and honor the giver of the gifts. I have learned it is better for me to join God in what he's doing than to ask him to join me in what I'm doing. Right. Hear me? Right. We are his body. He is the head. He's equipped us, called us, invited us, given us the privilege to join with what he's doing in the world. Now, when you use the gifts through the talents and the application that God has and will point out to you, your faith will be built up when you see God working through you. That's a miracle. There is a deep sense of satisfaction when you do so. And others benefit 
from the grace of God working through you. When we use these gifts with enthusiasm, motivated by love, God's grace, his wisdom, his glory are seen through us, his church. So when the body is functioning well, when our body is functioning well, and when the body of Christ is functioning well, we together through and by the empowering and gifting and the leading of the Spirit are a powerful, and transformational force. Not a fortress, but a force to benefit and impact the earth, which echoes and alters eternity. That's profound. Now, the good news is we don't have to muster up these things, but we have to ask God, receive what he would have for us, and then be obedient because of love, right, for other people. Not out of obligation, not of, oh, I have to do this, but God, thank you for the opportunity to get to serve you in the world. That's the right attitude. And if you're like me, I do not always have the right attitude. So I say, God, not only give me the grace to serve you well, but God, give me the heart to serve with your heart. Say amen, right? Come on. You do not need any more grumpy givers, right? I'm giving. God rather would have your heart than your hands. Are you hearing me? And once he changes our heart, then the Spirit works in us to naturally flow out doing what he would have us to do in the way that we'd have us to do it. And that's a miracle, right? It's a miracle that God uses jars of clay, broken vessels like we sang about, to fill us anew with his Spirit so that we can honor him. So again, this morning, we will look to gain better understanding of what these gifts are about as part, as our part in the engagement with the earth. Now, the truth is we could spend weeks on this subject, okay? And this would probably be better better um, and fuller, for sure, talked through in a Sunday school format or in a small group format where we can talk about the uh, nuances and the intricacies and drill down about what this gift is and what it does and how we receive these things and how they interact and all of that. There's lots of stuff here to unearth, and I would encourage you to do that. What I'm trying to do is deepen our understanding and recognizing that in our life together as a church, these things are important because your life matters. It matters. What you do matters. And because we are connected by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we saw that in Ephesians 4, that when You and I do things that glorify God and benefit each other. We all are built up. And then if we disconnect and if we pull apart or we hide our gifts or if we're hurting, we all hurt together. That's the beauty of being made in the image of God who designed us to be in community. The people in this room are a gift to you. And you are a gift to them. Regardless if you believe that or not, it's true. And I hope that you believe that. So God in his goodness and his grace tells us and gifts us with things. So we're going to return back to our jumping off point, Ephesians chapter 4. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and open it up. Of course, the verses are here on the screen, and this is where we looked at last week, and we're jumping from it again this week. 
It says in verse 7, Ephesians chapter 4, but grace was given to each and every one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, and that is pointing to a reference in the Old Testament, Psalm 68, replying it to Christ, when he ascended on high in the clouds, as we read about in the gospel, he led a host of captives. He was over both sin and death. He was resurrected. When he did so, he gave gifts to mankind. So what is clear from the passage, this passage, is Christ gave gifts to humans when he triumphed over both sin, death, and the devil. Devil, <laughs> the devil too, that, that one. And the devil, when he triumphed over them by his perfect life, right? you got to recognize the cross would not have been effectual, would not have been applied to us if, if Christ had sinned. Understand that that moment was brought about by perfected living, rightful obedience, loving response, walking according to the will and the law and the spirit of God as Christ did. He triumphed through his perfect life, atoning death and victorious resurrection. Then, after a period of time, he ascended to heaven. And he didn't leave us alone. There was a wondering even by the disciples, like, hey, don't go. We need you here, but he says, I have gifts for you. The Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus was in one place at one time. He had a physical body just like us. But the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at all times. Filling us, changing us, empowering us, convicting us, teaching us. I'm giving you these gifts. And so now it is our opportunity to occupy and overcome in his name, continuing his mission and his ministry in all places and in all ages. It is not by accident that you and I are alive during this time period. Have you ever wished that you were born at a different time? I have, right? Wouldn't it have been great to be around when this world was new? Wouldn't it be something to be here while the West was being explored? Wouldn't it have been amazing? But it helps us to know that God in his sovereign design placed us and planted us at just the right time, at just the right place, and equipped us to represent him, to know him, and to make him known even to the ends of the earth, which Rockford's probably in that category. Right? Here, in this place, and he gave us gifts. And he gave these gifts to each one of us, and he gave these gifts as he chose to do so. So I want you to understand, and this is our first point, okay? Three points, right? Number one, understand that there are a variety of gifts, not just a gift, the Holy Spirit empowers them, but a variety of gifts. And if you have notes, and I do have notes available, those online, there are notes, okay? Lots of stuff here, you can pick them up. Okay, I'm not going to go through every single here, thing here, but there are primarily five different passages 
in the New Testament that point to and talk about these gifts. And these lists may not be exhaustive, but I think they're at least comprehensive. For instance, and there's five slides here. We're going to hit these really quick. Okay? One passage is this. You might want to jot these down. This is 1 Corinthians 12. You go over to that slide. 1 Corinthians 12. Okay. It's going to be hard for you guys to read those. That's okay. Oh, they're okay. Okay? Talks about it. And you'll notice that I've numbered them. Okay? One is the gift of being an apostle. Then prophet, teacher, miracles, kinds of healings, helps, administration, tongues. Okay? And I'm not going to drill down on all of those. This is an overview. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 talks about those gifts. We'll see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. And go over to those. Yep, here's a whole bunch more, okay? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, different gifts of healing. And healing was in the other la- list, so I didn't number that. Miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, if it's the spirit of God or another spirit. The gift of tongues and then the interpretation of tongues. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to look at some of these things next week as Lee preaches for us next week, talking about these gifts as well, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors, teachers. Roman 12 also makes a list of gifts as Paul is instructing that church and lists some of these similarly and then adds some new gifts of prophecy, gifts of serving, teaching, encouraging, gifts of giving, and leadership, and mercy. And 1 Peter chapter 4 kind of categorizes two categories of gifts. If anyone speaks, do it, and we'll see this with the power and the courage and the understanding that God is speaking using those type of gifts and whoever serves do, do, do so in the grace of God. So you see in these lists, they're not always, none of them are identical, okay? He adds in this, he layers in that. Just like in a local body of Christ, there is a variety of gifts because the Holy Spirit Spirit is good to us and empowers us and includes us, which is scandalous, right? That you are included in the work of God? If you know yourself, you would think that's scandalous, right? But God does that. That's his wisdom to display his grace, to display his wisdom, to display his glory. They're given to build up the body of Christ and to advance the kingdom of God in the world. And we may ask for various gifts he gives as he chooses. They may also be imparted as we see in a couple places in scripture. They're given by Christ as he chooses and the measure is he chooses to give you. He has a plan. You are not an accident. He sees you. He's called you. He's equipped you and invites you to participate in what he is doing in the world. That's exciting. Christianity should not be boring. Amen, Pastor. God is on the move. He is a avenge, avenge. Not, well, he's an avenger. Well, sometimes he is. He's an adventurer. That's what I mean to say. On an adventure. He's a healer. He is a connector. He's a weaver. He's a leader. He speaks today, and you'll see the contrast between the living God of the Bible and mute idols. God speaks, he works, he hears, he equips even us, 
too is real. That's amazing. So understand there's a variety of gifts. And we need each of those. And each one has been given gifts. Secondly, understand there's a difference between gifts and talents. Understand gifts are not talents. I'm going to illustrate this. Spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts are not talents, even though they can be expressed through talents and applied to specific situations and circumstances. Spiritual gifts require spiritual life to function. Now, unlike talents, nothing happens without the Spirit's breath. When we confuse these, we lose the sense of the supernatural because all people have talents, right? For example, here's a list of some of the gifts and some talents, okay? My handy-dandy laser pointer here, high tech, Ta-da! and it doesn't work very well. Okay, all the cats in the room are going crazy right now. Following the laser. Okay, so you see gifts, right? And this was just a, a list I put together going to this side. Um, just some of the gifts, right? And then you see on the other side. So there's gifts of helps, but in administration and faith, all of these things. And then there's talents. And this is just a list of some talents that people will have, okay? Like athletic talents or abilities. Like, hey, you're good at carpentry. Like a mathematics or communication, okay? So this is how these work. So for instance, you may have a spiritual gift of, we'll just take one, leadership, and you may have a talent with carpentry, and then you may apply that in your work situation where you can use your spiritual gift of leadership, okay, in this industry to help people uh, in the kingdom of God, okay? That's how that could work. Now, you can have leadership, and you can apply it to, let's take, pay, take one, singing, musical ability, okay? There's a guy right here who has singing, musical ability, right? He also has a gift of leadership. Now, does, uh, let's pick somebody. Who, who's a non-Christian musician? Help me. You, oh, you guys don't listen to non-Christian music, right? Well, tell <laughs> Beyonce, thank you. <laughs> Does Beyonce have musical talent? It's debatable. No, just kidding. <laughs> so of course she does, right? Is she using it to build the kingdom of God? Not so much. Right? Well, what if she <laughs> used her talent, became a Christian, and used it, um, combined it with a gift of mercy? Right? So in singing their songs, they're about the mercy and the grace of God to bring mercy to people. One more, you can have a gift of encouraging, right? And you can say that you um, are an athlete, okay? So you have a gift of encouragement, you're an athlete, so you can use your athletic ability and use it to encourage people, bless people. You can see it on the athletic field, okay? Now, I think I have the gift of encouragement, but it's really debatable about athletic, right? But when I played football and did basketball and ran track, the gift of encouragement, I was encouraging people all the time and helping people all the time and coaching people all the time. And we see people doing that when you watch football, you watch basketball, you look at these super talented athletes but using their gifts to empower a talent and apply it to a specific place. Now, I want you to think about yourself, and I want you to um, have a conversation with God. I want you to, have a, um, I want you to think about um, how you have talents, what your gifts may be. I want you to have conversations with people who know you well and to think through how that you and I have been made. Ephesians, again, going chapter 2, verse uh, 8, 9, and 10, talks about that you are, I am, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus 
to do good works that God himself prepared in advance for us to do. So in order to understand the application of our gifts and our talents, we have to think about how God made us and how he gifted us. And then once we understand that, then we look for an opportunity that has been crafted for us to engage with our gifts to that thing that's available. And there are many opportunities in the church and in the community to both bless God's people and expand his kingdom. We have to engage. Hear me. You and I have a privilege and a responsibility to step up, to stand up, to raise up our hand and says, here I am. Send me. God, help us to be these type of people. God, help us to honor him by understanding how he's made us and what he's asked us to do. So in your notes, you'll see some questions, and I've put uh, a number of links. If you're online, you can go uh, online. You can click these things, look at some things that will help you. Okay, these are just some examples, some things that I found to think about these. Understand, gifts are not talents, but when we combine these things together and then look for places in which God is prepared in advance, no one retires in the kingdom of God. We just get retreaded, we just continue to go, we just change applications, perhaps locations. You, if you have Breath in your lungs, you have a pers- purpose that is God ordained. Helps us to engage with what God is doing. Third point understand that you are responsible to use your gifts. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We'll see this. Romans 12, starting with verse 6. I love to hear the sound of the turning of pages of the Bible. It's a nice sound. We have different gifts. Okay, you got that. According to the grace given by God to each of us. Grace, giving us things that we do not deserve. That is grace. Not because of your studliness, your awesomeness, because of his grace. Now, if your gift is prophesying, speaking from the word, speaking the word of the Lord. If that's your gift, then prophesy and do so in accordance with your faith. Now, if your gift is serving, then serve, right? Can you just hear Paul here? Hey, if if your gift is teaching, then teach. Not rocket science. Why do we make this so hard? Hey, if your gift is encouraging, then encourage. If your gift is giving, then give and do so generously. If your gift is to lead, then do it diligently. If your gift is showing 
mercy. Do it cheerfully. How would you feel if you spent time and effort and energy, if you saved up for a long time to get a special gift for someone you love? And you really worked and you sacrificed and you crafted it just for that person. How would you feel if you gave it to them and their response was, oh. And then put it in the back corner of some closet somewhere. If you gave that gift, that would not be a good feeling. God sacrificed, customized, and gave a gift to you. Let us thank him for what he's given. Let us explore how it works and what it does, and then let's engage with it. His gifts are not given as trophies to be placed on the mantle. They're given to be used. Understand the emphasis in this passage. You all have a gift, and they're different. You all have been graced with these things. So use it. Do it. Connect with it. He continues as you read this passage and connects with what we saw in 1 Corinthians 13 about love. Don't just pretend to love others. I love this translation. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Don't do it out of obligation. I have to be nice to that person. Do it because you love, really love them. Ask God for help for that. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine. Affection, and I pray that for us. That we love each other with genuine affection. Take delight. How oh, this is so good. In honoring each other. That is so healthy and so good. God, help us with this. Never be lazy. Work hard. Serve the Lord. Enthusiastic. This gives us direction. Again, in the body of Christ, as He's connected us together by the Trinity and the Father, Son, Holy Spirit has formed and fashioned us, told us to walk. Worthy of the calling we have received, the calling and our walk to be equal. We do this by connecting with these things. And sometimes it requires us to work hard. That tells us that there are going to be times in which it's going to be hard. There are times in which it requires extra energy and effort. But when we work hard and when we serve the Lord, hopefully with enthusiasm, right? The body of Christ is built up. The kingdom of God advances in our world. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 
Peter, the apostle, with the same spirit that Paul the apostle taught with, sums it up. Chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. We do this as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms, same language. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Each of you should use whatever whatever gift. I'm not laying a guilt trip on us. And God isn't either. But he is encouraging us that in his grace and his giftedness seen in your life, that we are to engage this in Scripture is not a suggestion. It is a command. Let that sink in. He's not like, well, if you get around to it and you feel like it, then go ahead and do it. If you want. But it's up to you. It's okay if you don't, though. It's not like that. This is the great king. Who is not asking you to do something that he did not do himself. The great giver of gifts. We are the body of Christ. We are. He is the head and he says, okay, body, let's go. Let's do this. In our physical bodies, we understand there's something wrong if our mind says, pick up this, and our body says, I don't think so. A disconnect. God asks us to engage and take these things seriously. We are God's plan A. There is no plan B. Wait, he'll be patient, he'll grace us, but he motivates us and says, let's go. Let us not bury what he's done in the sand or in the back closet. I don't feel like it. If your feelings are driving the, tra- the train of your life, you got problems. Because you're going to go all types of directions. Feelings are meant never to be the engine, but to be the caboose. This thing. This thing needs to lead you forward. Courage comes when your feelings are afraid, but you say, let's go anyway. Strength is shown when you don't have it anymore. and say, God, empower me to do this yet another day in love. You need God's help for this. 
If you have a speaking gift, do it with courage. As God was speaking. And if you have a serving gift, then do it in the strength that he provides. And when we do this, God is glorified. And we're designed to do that as his people. I'm going to come in for a landing. (laughs) Next week, Pastor Lee is going to lead us in the next section talking about apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors, teachers. I want you to hear. I want you to listen. But this week, I want you to settle in and I want you to hear. I pray that we hear. My words are foolish God's words are eternal. What is he saying to you today? And then I want you to pray and think about and process. God, how can I respond to you and be responsible to you? Think through, pray through, talk through, and engage. Try something, do something, get up, make a phone call, get connected, show up. Don't coast into the finish line. You hear me? Don't coast. Come on, keep pedaling, keep going, keep moving. Put the gas down, come on. The strength that God provides. So we're going to transition to communion. One of the things that binds us together, and if the ushers would make their way, Jeff could come up, that would be great. We're going to sing a song, a new song, right? Holy Spirit, we're doing that? It'd be great. And so, um, I make this a combined thing. So if you want to, uh, and I'm going to throw on this in here. <laughs> so as we take communion, and Jeff will lead us. Thank you, ushers, for helping us. If you want prayer, special prayer for anything, and just come up front. We're going to do that today. If you want to pray in your seats, you need to go after communion, just go and connect but if you want to pray we'll pray together come on up here we'll do that i will pray for you others will pray for you we'll spend some time